Here's a thought experiment. What if there was a computer in today's day and age, in your lifetime, that could be the last laptop you ever bought? I truly think this 14 inch M3 Max MacBook Pro could sustain me and my business and my career as a creative for the foreseeable future. I cannot imagine an upgrade that I could possibly need over this machine as it stands right now. And I wanna explain why. I have been an M1 user since the beginning. Since the M1 Mac Mini first came out, I was an early adopter. I said, hey, they're doing something interesting here. I wanna try this machine out. And it was one of the best decisions I've ever made when it came to buying computers and also investing in myself as a creative because this machine right here completely changed everything for me. I'm someone that stuck to a mid 2015 MacBook Pro up until like 2020. I powered through. How many of you guys are powering through? You have a machine right now that is probably damn slow, but you're getting it done. You're getting the stuff done that you need to do and you're okay with waiting a little bit longer to save some money to get that stuff done. I'm that same type of person. So spending less than 800 bucks on this machine coming from an old ancient Intel machine was a monumental leap forward for me in computing power. Now think of everything that's happened since M1. We had M2, which I totally skipped, and now we have M3. The only potential reason I could see someone going from M1 to an M2 or M3 machine is you've run out of RAM. We just did not have the RAM options we have now like we did back then. The tech community wants you to feel like you need the latest and greatest machine every single year. And that's because most of these YouTubers and stuff already have the latest and greatest things. So for them, it has to be this huge leap forward in order to recommend it. And there's only a few of us out there that are telling you, a lot of you still have Intel, right? If you're still on an Intel machine, go to any of the M chips and have a great time. Or if it's your first computer in the M series, absolutely go to the M3. It's the best of the best that we have available to us. But if you have an M1 or an M2, I can't make a great case for you to upgrade to this because you probably shouldn't. Just like iPhones, just like cameras, there's absolutely no reason to do year over year incremental updates for yourself dropping money. But then that leads us to this specific machine. This is a completely spec out 128 gigs of RAM, eight terabyte SSD machine. You cannot spec this 14 inch any higher than it is right now. There's that concept of buy something once and never worry about again. Having used this machine and coming from an M1 and having a Mac Studio with an M1 in it as well. This one is so far beyond what I could possibly do with a computer that I can't imagine a foreseeable scenario or future where I could max this thing out as a creative, which means this could potentially be the last computer I would ever need. This could be my desktop. This could be my mobile editing workstation. I can add a display to it. This becomes my post-production studio for the next 20 years. Apple Silicon is just so far ahead of the game and the complete package of having an amazing display, a great looking computer, all day battery life, what else could you possibly ask for? And on top of that, there is now one at every single price point or budget you could possibly imagine from like 700 bucks up to eight or $9,000. I'm not saying go spend eight grand on a laptop. What I'm saying is buy the machine that's just a little notch above what you're capable of right now. And I can pretty much guarantee for the next five, 10 years, that machine's probably gonna do everything you could possibly throw at it. I know that even as I grow as a creative and I get better cameras and I have more access to plugins and tools and I get better in Resolve and all these different applications, it doesn't sweat. The M1 didn't sweat. My Mac Studio doesn't sweat. And this, for damn sure, doesn't break a sweat. I've had this conversation with many people. I even said it to Apple themselves. I said, these computers are so damn good that they're kind of boring because there's no friction. Sometimes I need friction in my life. I talk about this when I'm filmmaking. I like boxes. I like things to push back a little bit to get me creative and thinking around the machine or what the tool that I'm using. With this, it just works. Just like having a good camera, like the latest and greatest camera, it is a constant reminder that is entirely up to you. There is nothing that this machine can't do. If I want to get into VFX more and doing Cinema 4D and Blender and stuff, here's the machine for that. If I want to become a better colorist, here's the machine for that. If I want to start doing sound and using logic and becoming a composer, here's the machine for that. So as much as I like to preach this box that I want to live in, now I'm starting to think it's maybe better to remove excuses. Your work doesn't suck because of the camera you own or the computer that you're editing it on. It sucks because of you. To get better as a creative, you need to learn, you need to practice, and you need experience. We don't need to buy things anymore to get better at what we do. Things can make our life easier, which then can unlock creativity and make you more excited to make things. I am excited to edit things on this computer because it's new and it's shiny and it's fun. There's a total psychological reason for stuff like that too. Same reason I like getting a new phone. I take better pictures when I have that new phone, not because the phone is better, 
because psychologically I'm more excited because I have this new thing and it inspires me to create certain things. I just think it is so exciting that as a creative, especially if you're a photographer or a filmmaker, we have forever machines right now. We have cameras, we have computers, we have lights, we have microphones, we have all the stuff that could be what we use until the end of time, until we are gone from this planet, this is the stuff we could create our things with. Like I said, there will be things that make our life a little bit easier perhaps. I can't imagine a scenario where I would need more computing power than this. It is impossible for me to even imagine it because I know how much I was capable of doing with an original you know, $800 M1 Mac mini with 16 gigs of RAM. Now we're talking about an M3 Pro with 128 gigs of RAM, an eight terabyte SSD. There's quite literally nothing for me to nitpick about this. It's just too crazy of a time. We are so lucky to have access to technology like this because even if you go from the cheap one to the most expensive one, it's on you, it's entirely up to you. These machines will not push back on you if you know what you're doing. And especially if you've come from Intel or any other previous old camera, or old computer, look what we put up with to get our stuff done. And that stuff was good stuff. Now that friction is completely removed. You notice that this video had no benchmarks, no tests, no comparisons, nothing. It's irrelevant to me. I don't think it matters anymore. Stop looking at the seconds of difference between an export time or a render time. Get the machine that's in your budget, throw your workflow at it. If you have issues with it, return it. Try a different one. Save up a little more money or put up with it. Put up with that little bit of slowdown until you get better and you have your business bringing in money that can afford a more expensive computer. But don't sit and argue about eight gigs of RAM, 16 gigs of RAM, 32, what SSD should I buy? What color should I buy? I'm giving you a perspective right now as an original M1 user, as someone who put up with the old school Intel crap, you cannot go wrong with any of these new M machines. And I cannot recreate your specific workflow. So try the one that you can afford, test it out, throw some stuff at it, experiment, and find the machine that fits your needs because I guarantee there is one that fits your needs within your budget as well. If you have any specific questions about the machines, but again, don't ask me about workflow tests, don't tell me about Premiere Pro or anything like that, but if you wanna talk about my perspective on this, let's have a conversation in the comments. Otherwise, my name is Patrick, thank you for watching this video, and you will see or hear me next time I feel like making a video. Cheers. Oh, Inspiration day by day, you are my reason to smile, and I know that come one day.